Good morning. Good morning to you all and welcome to this new session of our Future of Food conference. This session is dedicated to food loss and food waste and we'll look together at how we can deliver impact through innovation. Circular economy is definitely an essential goal for the EU, but it is also one of the global SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, for the UN. And Target 12.3 aims to halve the per capita food waste uh, at the level of consumption and retail by 2030. This is less than 10 years away. The same target aims to reduce food loss at earlier stages upstream in the process in food production and in food chains. Now, how can that be achieved? How do companies decide of the measures that they want to put in place to reach this goal? And how can we measure the impact of the solutions that are put in place? We will be discussing this with our distinguished speakers today, which I would like or whom I would like to welcome on stage, if I can say so, virtual stage. So first, I'd like to welcome Paola Giavedoni. Paola is the Innovation Director for EIT Food. Good morning, Paola. Good morning, everybody. Tatiana Tallarico. Tatiana is Policy Officer uh, uh, in Research, Food 2030, Food Systems and Circularity at the Director General uh, Research and Technological Development in the European Commission. Good, Good morning, morning, Tatiana. Good morning. Katerina Cemetova. Katerina is CEO and founder of Fiber Globe, a startup, and she will tell us more about that later. Good morning, Katerina. Rosa Prati. Rosa is Research and Development Manager at Caviro in Italy. Morning, Rosa. And Heard Masmans, Heard is Director of Research and Development at Cargill. Welcome to you all. It's a pleasure to have you here with us. Thank you. I would, like, I would like to start by setting the scene or asking you to set the scene rather from the point of view of your own organization or your own company. And I will start with you, Paola, because uh, uh, you are one of the people behind this conference and behind, in particular, this specific panel. Now, EIT has a rather horizontal approach in, in all of its work, and this is reflected in the prog program of this particular conference. But could you tell us how specifically important is the reduction of food loss and food waste for the future of food? Thank you, Florence. Thank you very much. Uh, let me say a couple of words because uh, why we decided to, to dedicate the one entire session to food loss and food waste. We heard uh, in the previous uh, plenary sessions to talk about the farm to, uh, farm to fork strategy. But tackling food waste is one of the priorities, is one of the key elements to address in order to achieve uh, the desired impact. You also mentioned the statistic or the, actually the commitment from the Commission uh, really to achieve this target of uh, reduce by half the uh, per capita food waste uh, at retail and consumer level by 2030, which is a very ambitious target. So the farm to fork strategy and the related documents uh, provide us guidance to our decisions. But the question is, uh, how can we shape our innovation agenda? to drive decision on the next steps concerning food loss uh, and food waste. So this is, this is for us a key, a key question. At EIT Food, um, we have defined uh, six focus areas. One of them is dedicated uh, to circular food system. Um, within this, we tackle as one of our priorities, uh, food loss and food waste. Now we are working with partners to define uh, the main, let's say the main streams, the main, uh, the main project uh, to build our portfolio, strong portfolio. And, uh, the, and this portfolio um, has the aim to, to develop concrete solutions to implement the farm to fork uh, policy objectives. 
At this moment, um, I would like to highlight uh, a few pending issues um, that I would like to discuss and to share with you today. The first one is what are the principles or the criteria that we should follow in building our innovation agenda? So we really look for guidance, how to define food loss and food waste in this context. We need such definitions to identify volumes, for example, or streams uh, or byproducts. For example, uh, are we talking about products, uh, uh, for example, food loss before uh, or only after harvest? What is excluded? What is included? Uh, edible parts of animals, for example. So um, the adoption of standardized definitions uh, will allow, uh, allow the collaboration between players, so will allow us to have a common language and uh, to, to connect all the different uh, players in the value chain. The second point that I would like to raise is um, we know very well that the first thing to do for all of us is and always is to avoid producing waste. And uh, by the way, at EAT Food, we have uh, a numerous products. We have several projects that are tackling exactly this. However, when this is not possible, um, what are the best valorization options and how to choose them? So we will need the decision-making processes uh, to identify the best route to take to facilitate this. What criteria drive the selection of the optimal solutions? What are the best valorization pathways? And the third point uh, is uh, about measurement, about how shall we measure and compare the impact generated uh, by alternative solutions. Only when we can measure something, we can compare and we can also, we can also change. A recent study published by the GRC, uh, the Joint Research Center, include uh, three, uh, three methods or three uh, assessment direction. One is the technical economic, one is social, and one is environmental. So clearly, we need to take them all into consideration. However, um, I would like also to highlight the fact that some of the suggested methodologies, um, for example, life cycle assessment, can be particularly uh, heavy can be particularly difficult or, or, or expensive for uh, SMEs or for uh, startups. Um, and so there's smaller players uh, in the market. So uh, as I say, I'm not, um, I'm more raising points for the discussions and uh, I would like to give uh, back to you now, Florence, the, the stage. Thank you very much, Paola. I think it is indeed uh, a lot of uh, questions that um, we probably won't find the answers to today, but it certainly helps us guide the debate. And I will now turn to you, Tatiana, uh, to have the, the, the point of view of, uh, of the Commission. Now, the Commission recently published a series of, of 10 pathways as part of this uh, Food 2030 agenda, and it has also dedicated uh, a chapter uh, to food waste uh, in its farm to fork strategy. Why did it do that? I mean, we heard just from, from Paola some of the questions that have been raised. Um, how's the Commission looking at that? Thank you, Florence. Thank you. Uh, exactly, as Paola mentioned before, um, food waste is a key aspect of the farm to fork strategy, uh, which wants to implement the European Green Deal. And, achieve this great objective of making Europe the first climate neutral continent. In fact, the farm to fork strategy wants to uh, decrease the environment and climate uh, footprint by creating robust and resilient food systems. What does it mean? Uh, food systems where the food production has a negative, as a neutral, I'm sorry, or positive at least, uh, environmental impact, where food is affordable, where food security and public health are ensured, uh, and food waste has been recognized as a, as a, as a key uh, driver to reach this objective. And also, as Paula mentioned before, again, uh, food waste is one of the Food 2030 pathways, um, which are part of a publication launched uh, last October in, um, at the occasion of the World Food Day. Um, and these pathways for actions have been chosen because uh, we think that they can, can really contribute to achieve a multi-objective transformation of our food systems. 
And each pathway uh, sets out the systemic challenge, uh, the barriers and enablers, the expected co-benefits um, that tackling this challenge could bring, and identify potential research and innovation areas that could be tackled. So um, behind every pathway, there is really a big analysis of work to understand uh, which are the areas, which are the research and innovation areas where investment is more needed. Uh, we analyze also the status quo of the uh, past EU-funded projects and, and, the, and the gaps still, uh, still there. Uh, what we underline, especially in this document, is the need for a systemic approach, which FU2030 is really stressing, uh, because indeed the Commission is ready to, uh, to lead this transformation, but cannot, uh, cannot do everything alone. Uh, we need, okay, policies and regulation and research and innovation, but we need all actors on board, from the farm to the fork, uh, and at all uh, governance levels, so from local to global. And especially we do stress the importance of having citizens on board. Uh, with this, I thank you. Uh, i give you back the floor, Florence. Thank you. Thank you for setting uh, the, uh, the scene from the uh, angle of the Commission. Now, let's look at what big companies do, and I'll turn to you, Geert. Um, you are a research and development specialist. How does the aim of reducing food waste impact your actual daily work? How, how do you implement it in your strategies? Well, thanks for the question, Florence. It's a very broad one, right? So, and I'd first like to say that uh, we're also a member of uh, Food Drink Europe and in there the European technology platform on food for life. And with with the food for life team, we've, we've clearly talked also about three big research and innovation targets for, uh, for R&D to make our food system more secure, more sustainable, more healthy. And those are really about how do we engage consumers in participating in our change. They're talking about how do we make food more personable, more personal, uh, if you like, and then how do we set up that sustainable integrated supply system, if you like. And in each of those topics, if you go to our website or if you look at what has been shared there, there's plenty of examples of where there are R&I targets and topics that we can work on and that we should be working on if we move in that way. If I take it personal and I try to translate it into, into Cargill and what we do as Cargill. And then maybe to start, I should say that for the last uh, 155 years or so, we've been basically doing three things. We've been transporting agricultural-based raw material. Two, we've been transforming those raw materials into, into finished goods, which could be food products, which could be feed products, which could be industrial products, which could be ingredients and additives. And three, we've been helping people with supporting services and insights around that, right? And so if we look at the mission that we have as Cargill, where we talk about nourishing the world in a safe way to start with, but also in a sustainable way, then you will see immediately that, that food loss is something that goes directly against our mission which also means that uh, the whole discussion about food losses, about sustainability, is something that we almost use as a filter in, in how we look at what we're doing and how we are running our operations. And we do that uh, because of who we are and because of where we've chosen to, to play in that value chain. We do it in, in big parts along that value chain. We work with farmers on innovating and defining how they can minimize their losses, how we can optimize crops and, and give advice and, and, and sell services and making sure we get the right raw material to make the food products we all need. We work in, in minimizing the losses in the factories that we own ourselves. We, we have continuous programs on trying to, to minimize those and, and pushing those forward. We make those ingredients and additives. Some of them have a direct impact on how we formulate food and how we can, by formulation, drive the shelf life of products. Right. So in using preservatives, for instance, as, as one tool of that. Uh, but we also look at it in the terms of um, saying that all the side streams that we have and the things that maybe do not go directly to a food product, how can we make sure we recuperate them and we make full use of them, sometimes in bioindustrial uh, applications? Right. So and then also look, think about packaging, think about alternatives for plastics and so on. Uh, and that's how we look at it. So it's it's coming really back. It's touching us across everything that we do 
And it's almost like a primary filter in, in how we look at R&D and how we define the research agendas that we have in each of those elements in the value chain and then how we connect them across to make sure that we maximize the full utilization of that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, Katerina, um, in yeah. your uh, hello, in your presentation of your of your uh, company, you say that for you the coordination between research, industry, and the needs of consumers is absolutely essential. It's the core of of what you do. How do you see innovation having an impact on food loss and food waste? Thank you. Thank you for the floor. And uh, of course, because innovation is the baseline for all of these three, you can say, stakeholders, industry, academic and society. And um, taking also the words from uh, Geert, um, I think, uh, yes, I, I think the wastes and byproducts should be seen in, as an opportunities but uh, a smart opportunities as well, because transforming waste in an in innovative way of using them in a add value products, add value goods. Um, I think this application also should be, um, a a uh, should be seen as a global picture where um, economics, of course, plays a real, play a really important world, world, um, in a business world, economics, like, yeah, the cash flow is always important, but also as a research uh, in my background, I also understand that the environmental and scientifically proven results, um, it's also a, a, um, an important line um, that that also help innovation go through the academic, the academic part and to deliver uh, to to a product to a society, and uh, in a transparent way, so the society engagement should be also seen as a part of this innovation, as a part of this triangle link, um, and it can be can be seen yes, can be seen as a uh, also part of the agenda uh, involving all the um, the stakeholders and all the parties. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Katerina. Rosa. Rosa, hello. Um, your company has decided to use waste produce to generate byproducts and generate revenue from these byproducts. How do you do that? I thank the organization for, uh, for inviting Caviro in, uh, in this meeting. Um, the, the, the first uh, answer of, in uh, your question is Caviro uh, uh, is the largest cooperative group in Italy and uh, uh, the, the amount of grape in, uh, food, in all food chain is very relevant, My millions of tons per year. Consequently, we also, the waste after wine making process was relevant too. We are talking about the grape pomance, grape seed and lees. We decided to valorize this kind of side stream in order to obtain a new product and a new um, value. So, for instance, we can obtain uh, tartaric acid, polyphenol uh, by extraction or uh, coloring agent uh, for food industry and uh, also by uh, the, the red skin. After this treatment, uh, we still have an uh, exhausted material and uh, with uh, the exhausted material, we can obtain biogas, uh, fertilizer and uh, um, energy with uh, the anaerobic digestion. Thank you, Florence. So that's a very broad range indeed of, of byproducts uh, from the same source. Um, having now set the scene, I'd like to uh, uh, actually ask the same question to all of our speakers. We've heard about your experience. We've heard about your plans, um, but concretely, how how do we meet 
the ambitions of the farm to fork strategy and how can we on that basis shape on the one hand the policy agenda and on the other hand the research and development agenda there are two agendas which need to work together so maybe i'll start with you tatiana on, on this particular question and and uh, probably more from the angle of the policy agenda thank you florence actually from both the agendas because uh, i work in the director general for research and innovation so we are uh, responsible to shape and to design horizon europe which is the uh, european uh, union research and innovation uh, program so we finance uh, projects and actually this is a way we um, will um, this way through which we will deploy the pathway, the Food 2030 pathway on food waste that I mentioned before. Uh, so we have we have defined uh, beforehand the areas where uh, investment is more needed, and we will so uh, translate this into calls for proposals. Uh, and especially uh, with Horizon Europe, the, because it's, this is a new uh, research and innovation program which will start uh, soon uh, next year. Uh, for the first time, this program has been really co-created with uh, member states, with external stakeholders, and with the other um, director general of the Commission. So we really wanted to ensure uh, the alignment of both the research and innovation agenda and the policy agenda. And let's see what will uh, come out of it. Um, Katerina, what about uh, the, the agenda seen from your angle, the research and development agenda, as well as the policy agenda? How, how do you think we can uh, meet the ambitions and set the agenda? Thank you. Thank you. And uh, yes, it's really important to establish the link between both of them. And um, I think the targets also should be seen as um, has a process, not only the goal. So how we establish the process of the agenda. And uh, in a research and development side point of view, I think the, this, uh, this points um, should also navigate through all the parties that I already said, through all the stakeholders. So see what is really needed, what 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 we can prevent, what losses we can prevent um, in the, in the uh, primary production side, for example, with fiber globe, uh, what we can prevent, what we can valorize, and what really economically and environmental and um, in the social can be done um, and can be applied. So have starting in a broader perspective and going deeper um, to find this uh, final yeah goals. I think so. Thank you. What about you, Kirt? Uh How would you? try and link those two agendas and, and develop them. Yeah. I've, I agree very much with what Katarina was saying. It's like the, 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 they're very strongly interconnected, right? Because the first and almost a, a, a boundary condition is that if we do not convince people that food waste, food loss in a way is a choice, a choice we, we all make as, as an industry, as a business, but also as an individual consumer on what I put in my refrigerator and what not, uh, depending on when I know my kids are gonna come home, yes or no. If I don't make that awareness starting, which each of us as companies, but also as individuals, we're not gonna get anywhere. Because across that value chain, there is a big part of that loss which is happening in my refrigerator. And there is part of that loss what is happening in my company. And because of that change across that value chain, if you think about it, we have many farmers who produce raw materials, which are processed through fewer companies, which are supplied to more retailers, which are going to even more consumers. You have a continuous change of the scale of which we, we have operations ongoing there. And so one size of solution will not fit all. And so that awareness of, I have a choice and I can make a difference here is where it starts with. And then I think that it needs to be complemented from as well from a tools and from a framework and from a research and innovation strategy with a couple of things. One is give me as a company, but also me as an individual consumers, the data and the transparency on what I'm doing. But then help me also 
giving me economically viable scenarios that allow me to make a better choice. And those choices will vary across the year, across where you are in that value chain. And if there is no fair regulatory framework around that, that would not Europe, that would not enable Europe to be competitive and uh, everybody to prosper in that value chain, we're not going to get anywhere. So for us, it's really an interaction between looking at it as a chain, but looking at it at different interaction, different intersection points along that chain would probably require different tools and different metrics to make it an effective uh, farm to fork strategy. Thank you, Heert. Rosa, I could see you nodding while Heert was speaking. So clearly you uh, must agree with him on, uh, on at least part of this approach. This is a good question because uh, uh, we are a good part on, the, on this process and um, about uh, uh, the future of uh, this uh, type of, uh, of approach, uh, I think uh, uh, the ag agricultural system uh, is a good point to start because uh, in um, this uh, um, strategy and uh, this opportunity is a good opportunity uh, to challenge the agriculture in a, a change of paradigm in, uh, in, uh, in the future. Because uh, uh, with a bottom-up vision which, uh, um, which start the feed to the consumer, Thank uh, to all the players involved, uh, farmers, agri-industries, uh, researchers and consumers, we can improve uh, the new approach in agricultural system. Uh, this paradigm become uh, uh, possible by going through the exploitation of technology and the reduction of wastefulness of natural resources as water and soil. However, it also relevant today a progressive reduction of chemical pro protective agents in the fields, such as uh, pesticide and also all uh, also uh, GH uh, G emission, uh, making uh, supply chain more sustainable, both economical, uh, socially and uh, environmentally. This uh, um, this uh, will make uh, us a stronger and more credible uh, uh, toward the consumer who will have uh, to be our link to expand uh, the circular, circularity strategy with a view to recovery is waste making making a recovery easier. Um, in particular, the strength of uh, the future will be precisely uh, the cost the construction of supply chain for the correct recovery of waste from food supply chain that can have a new life and no longer to be considered waste. Caviro in uh, this type of uh, circularity is an example uh, for uh, um, the OECD in uh, 2018 because in uh, the document uh, about uh, the circular economy, uh, our uh, model was an uh, um, able uh, uh, example for the, for the future, because uh, we use uh, all uh, the byproduct from uh, our supply chain to obtain uh, new value. And uh, the approach of uh, this uh, new strategy um, confirm our uh, uh, sustainable approach. And uh, in this case, uh, we think uh, this is a, a good opportunity for uh, the uh, agricultural system and uh, for the farmers and also for all uh, the agro-industrial uh, because uh, we can modify our model and improve our uh, sustainable system. Thank you. Uh, Paola, I, I think having heard uh, the, the, the other speakers, uh, you, you have a, a good basis uh, for, for EAT food to uh, 
uh, try and reconcile or try and uh, continue the interaction, in, enhance the interaction between these uh, these two uh, agendas, the policy agenda and the uh, R&D agenda. So how do you look at it from your angle? You need you need to unmute yourself, Paula. Muted. Can you hear me now? Uh, okay. So what I was saying is that indeed uh, for us it is really key to implement, if you want, the from one side the strategy, uh, and from from the other also to to reach, um, let's say, uh, solutions uh, via the, the technology innovation. Uh, in particular, we have this integrated approach. Uh, we see um, always in our uh, project, um, uh, uh, let's say, multiple, multiple sides. For example, we involve uh, education components. We involve communication and public engagement. Uh, um, there is a strong uh, also business, uh, business uh, component. In fact, our project they really need to deliver concrete results uh, on the market. I also would like to mention, for example, that one of the key components when we select projects uh, is the, the co-creation. So the co-creation factor, uh, co recumers, uh, co-creation with other key stakeholders, but also with, with customers or, on, or users. Um, so this is really uh, has to be Pro, um, process. Um, I would like to highlight some examples of, of projects, of subjects that are, uh, um, you know, in, within our portfolio. For example, uh, on preventing or avoiding food waste, uh, um, we have uh, interesting digital solutions, for example, for stock optimization or for connecting supply and demand, which is now something really coming up, uh, especially um, after the COVID. Uh, uh, um, I can mention also platforms to uh, connect uh, farmers and consumers. Uh, on the side of uh, uh, revalorization of industry side streams, I can mention, for example, insect-based bioconversion or a reutilization of materials of, of these byproducts uh, in new application like ingredients, for example, uh, to reconstitute or to create new uh, type of food products, but also non-food product, uh, non products like cosmetics or even for, for feed, for animal feed. Interesting also these um, marketplaces, the digital marketplaces where um, uh, for the food industry, where really the, the industry is, uh, players who have um, uh, products to, to sell, so buy products to sell um, and others they put together the, um, to, to, to create really a digital, a virtual marketplace. Um, I can mention also for the for the primary sector uh, solutions to help and uh, convert and reuse a surplus material, uh, for example, the extraction of proteins from fish, or uh, solutions for for consumer developing technologies based on the dynamic prices, and this is at retail uh, level. So this back to you. Thank you. Um, so you have mentioned uh, your your approach and how you uh, how you try and bring those two agendas together. But I'd like to uh, to to ask you about your actual strategies. And starting with you, Geert, um, in terms of minimizing food waste, it seems that the most difficult thing to do is to actually measure the impact of the various. Uh, solutions that you put in place and we will come back to that in a few minutes in our discussion but what drives your approach then how how do you select the priorities uh, that you you try to find solutions for yeah it, it, it's a good question because it's not not because it's not an easy one to answer but because there's uh, there's different views on the same topic right and so you're absolutely right. It's there's different ways of measuring it, uh, and at the end, uh, it's still true that you know food loss is food loss, right? So and 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 so we usually what we try to do or the way we try to make choices is we're not looking at it too much from a food loss point only, but we let it be driven by our sustainability strategy, if you like. And so what we do is we complement the 
calculation, if you like, of what is food loss and food waste with one of the greatest management tools ever invented called common sense. All right. And so we, 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 we try to look at it really on saying that if we think about a list of solutions, we try to think about it from the top point of view on, so can we do this? Is this, is this feasible? How is this helping us getting closer to our corporate sustainability goals? So that part, that's one part. Two, we try to think about it in lines of, so what does it actually do? Is the impact of project one bigger than project two? And are we ready to decide today? Because there's many options that you have. And sometimes we deliberately choose to take to keep one or two options alive because we don't believe that one solution fits all. And so we try to figure out in the same bucket, we try to look at, OK, this is the solution we think we, we have. But would there be undesired consequences? One of what we're trying to avoid in the way we think about it is saying, if I solve my problem by, by pushing it to Rosa or pushing it to Katarina, we're not really solving the system, are we? And so, so how, how is that helping us? Three, of course, we always look at uh, it needs to make economic sense. We're a company, and if we can't afford the type of solutions, it's not going to move. And those really drive the comparison of different projects. And then we overlay that with a layer of, call it the whole kinetics and dynamics, which is like our, our management team has given us pretty strict targets on how we are moving our uh, sustainability target. So we look at different options of saying, how fast is this helping us to get closer to our desired state? Uh, as a private company, we're never really good at communicating uh, with the broad audience, but we are spending more time nowadays on, can we explain that? And so how, how does this make sense? And how does this, do we tell that story better? Um, to refer also to the, what Tatiana mentioned earlier, also on the, the social dimension of uh, how we talk about what, what we're trying to do in food loss and food waste. Thank you. Now, Katerina, uh, we, we've just heard the, uh, the, the, the uh, criteria that Cargill uses. Now, they're a major multinational. You, you run a startup. Uh, what are your criteria? Are they similar? Do you work on the same basis? How do you select uh, your actual projects? Thank you. Yes, they are. Um, the base is similar of the choice, at least as an individual and as a fiber globe startup. Um, and uh, also because the, the background of uh, yeah, of a, a big enterprise and a, um, a startup, I think is the same in the way that we want to change, right? We want to change. We have the ambition to change the, the specific way of what we are doing in a specific way of fiber globe, how we choose it. We choose it um, in a comparison also uh, in this specific case that we are using a biomass waste stream from one industry, example, pulp, pulp wood industry. So we want to understand how we can measure and how we can understand what is the value or how is the cost for them not using in the best way. So how we can uh, deliver also a measure measurement tool for them and for us to help to our choice. And on the other way, um, the on the process itself, um, we wanted and we, we managed to understand how we reduce all the waste that we, we in the transformation process. So the optimization is also important, the measurement and the process optimization. And in the other part, like the application part in the horticulture industry has a substrate we wanted also to understand how we measure there in the end and the end user as we can say uh, due to, to due to the alternatives that they wanted to choose and uh, if they choose fiber globe how we how, how they can uh, measure it so we help them also to do it so our choice is in the in the chain of the product uh, in the chain the raw material, the process, and the application. Thank you. Um, Rosa, in the case of Caviro, how, how did you decide all of a sudden, or it probably wasn't all of a sudden, uh, so how did you decide to use your, your byproducts the way you do, and, and what made you go for that solution? Oh. Uh
In, in that case, uh, we are going uh, to define more part of uh, our process uh, in accordance with my speaker colleague. I confirm this is a, a really complex uh, system because uh, we start uh, from uh, the farmers, from the grow, and we finish uh, in uh, uh, good glasses of wine and also in uh, more other type of uh, uh, new product uh, like uh, tartaric acid, uh, like polyphenol, like more, more, more other uh, type of product. And in this case, uh, we have, we have uh, evaluation from uh, the GROW with uh, uh, sustainability and uh, um, KPI for uh, the growers. Then uh, we have a large part of production in, uh, in part industrial production, in part winery production, in part byproduct production. All these companies are uh, certified in ISO system, but uh, ISO system in, uh, in, uh, in that case uh, hasn't uh, in, uh, enough. And uh, in this case, uh, we are going uh, to define uh, in, uh, in this time more other KPI in order to conform the uh, ISO like a basis and then we obtain more uh, KPI uh, for uh, um, uh, climate identification, uh, um, uh, social identification, and also economically definition. So the definition of sustainability in general. And uh, for the la last part uh, is uh, the consumer, our uh, clear KPI, because uh, uh, our product is a, a clear product and also all the chain permit a confirmation of our strategy. Finally, uh, the, the, the most important part is uh, uh, the strength and the confirmation from our growers because they are our owners and our identification on the future. Thank you. Now, Tatiana, go, going back to uh, going back to the Commission's approach um, in terms of circularity, what what's the Commission doing? Uh, is it uh, uh, looking more at uh, prevention, reduction, valorization? What's what's the Commission's approach? Thank you for it. Um, I can say that from 2015, uh, the European Commission has been working to create the enabling framework for to fight food waste. Uh, in fact, in 2015, the Circular Economy Action Plan was published, and since then, maybe we had, um, sorry, not maybe many were the achievement. Uh, I can say that. Uh, the platform, the European platform on uh, food loss and waste uh, prevention and reduction was created. Um, two guidelines, two, two very important guidelines were uh, published, for instance, the one to facilitate food redistribution, um, the guideline to optimize the safe use of uh, food in feed, and then uh, very recently in 2018, uh, a common methodology to measure uh, food waste was defined thanks to the um, uh, support of member states because it was uh, really a co-creation uh, co process. So a common uh, food waste methodology was created and finally since 2018 there is the obligation from member states to measure and to report food, national food waste level to the Commission. We will have the first result in 2022. Uh, because the 2020 will be the first year uh, where, when this uh, data will be collected. And so we will see, um, uh, we will, we will uh, take lessons out of them. And then uh, again, there will be, uh, in 2023, uh, very likely, um, there will be a new level in target to reduce food waste. Because you know that so far we, uh, we are still, we are aiming at the uh, UN 
targets. So the Commission doesn't have a proper target to reduce food waste, but there is a proposal, uh, so we are working on it, and very likely in 2023 we will have such a European target. And also, another work in progress is the revision of uh, date marking rules, because uh, you may know that date marking is one of the drivers of food waste, because there is a huge confusion between this uh, use by, uh, use by uh, best before, uh, so consumers are sometimes confused, and this creates, uh, uh, even without the willingness to do it, food waste. And then we have finally uh, all the research and innovation agenda that I mentioned before. So we are working to design uh, Horizon Europe and food uh, waste and loss prevention, but also valorization will be a big part of it, uh, including the measurement aspect, including a big work on uh, changing social norms. Um, Paola, you, you, you told us uh, a few minutes ago about uh, how, you, uh, uh, how you meet some of the ambitions and some of the projects that you've already put in place, but how do you uh, put together these programs of activities? How do you select the projects that you want to go for? On, on, on what basis? What drives your selection? You need to unmute yourself. Something wrong with that. Can you hear me now? Yeah. So as I said before, we we really uh, we really um, try to draw to to build this portfolio uh, by uh, by answering questions. So we define priorities together with our partners, and we and we provide through our project we provide solutions. Um, we have also in place a so-called group of, of of people. We are divided into these six focus areas, and also within the circular food system, we we tackle exactly food waste and food loss but also other subjects like packaging or, or, or like you know other other priorities um, we, we we really involve our partners and we like to involve especially the communities we like to involve uh, consumers uh, or, or key stakeholders um, yeah I think that the projects as I say I mentioned them already uh, so I think this is is it answering your question or thanks Yes, yes. I, I, I think you had already started outlining that for us, and and, and we wanted to focus more on the uh, on the actual criteria which which you have given us. And I'll stay with you for the uh, uh, for the next round of questions, which will be the last one before we actually start taking questions from our audience, which are coming in. Um, we've looked at the definition of food waste. We've looked at how we select the solutions, uh, but. This is all guesswork, basically, if we cannot assess the solutions that are put in place. Um, so how, how is it possible to, to assess the measures that are put in place? You mentioned it in your introduction. It is difficult, right? Yes, indeed. It is difficult. Uh, the subject is, is, on the other hand, very, very important. Um, I'm very pleased to hear what Tatiana said because these uh, new policies um, will help us a lot. Uh, I have to say, I, I'm, I'm, we need these criteria, we need these, uh, these, these, you know, drivers and pathways, uh, these definitions to to facilitate uh, this assessment. Um, so what I would like to mention is that uh, I think it is important, as also Katerina was saying, uh, Gerd mentioned, that the economical aspect at the end is, is, is the one that is driving, but we cannot do without uh, the other aspects that are absolutely the uh, environmental component and the social component. And I would like to consider within the social component also something that, that for EIT food is, is really at the heart of what we do, which is the, the health dimension. So um, healthy nutrition is also one of our, uh, of our uh, objectives of, of impact. So a lot of work in progress and uh, very welcome all the, the new uh, policies um, and also the collaboration with, uh, with all the partners. Kirt, uh, what about you? What about measurement in your case? How do you measure the actions that you take in your organization? 
Uh, thanks for a question, Florence. The, the way, like I said before, we try to link it very strongly to our, uh, let's call it, let's say it our sustainability policy, right? Because it's in, in, in a way we think that the element of food loss is only a fraction of what we do in that scheme, right? And so it depends on where you are, which product lines, which regions that we're talking about. But we're focusing really on things like land use, water use, uh, energy. We look at farmer li livelihoods and we definitely look at the human rights aspects of what we do in there. And to give you an example, if, if we talk about we have a project in North America, which we call our beef, uh, which is based on beef meat sustainability program. And that really goes from working with farmers on how do we optimize grazing lands, conditions and work in there. It goes into feed and feed conversion uh, facilities, feed conversion factors and maximizing the return on, on those kind of things, minimizing the loss in there. It goes on basically the meat that we talk about there. And there we are definitely looking also in their food loss is a specific line that we track. And it looks at the total environmental impact on that. And so that's an example of where we look at it uh, in different levels and where sometimes food loss pops up there. Uh, yes, sometimes no, depending on if we really can make a difference there and if it makes sense. For instance, uh, one of the things that we did, our, our colleagues have done, is challenging some regulators in uh, in a couple of South American countries where things that were, quote unquote, uh, falling on the ground, the moment it's uh, a, an agricultural product fell on the ground, it was not considered as a food product anymore. And we were, quote unquote, forbidden to use it, whereas farmers would store it on the ground as well or during harvest it's in the open air anyway. And so we really worked with demonstrating the economical uh, impact and the economical importance of that. But then also with the local regulators to say that, hey, why, why can't we be a bit, bit more logical about this and how far can we go without jeopardizing, of course, the food safety and food quality requirements of what we do, but really trying to figure out where in those value chains are those losses happening and then what do we do about that? Right. So it's it's trying to make it as tangible as possible, but remaining flexible because really it really depends on what type of product that you're talking about and what type of value chain that we're talking about that will give you the guidance on saying what's the biggest impact. Thank okay. you. So, yeah, really touching a point upon all the aspects that we have discussed until now or that have been raised on, on uh, by several of our speakers, the social, the health aspect, including animal health in this particular case, uh, the economic uh, aspect as well as the environmental aspect. So a pretty broad uh, spectrum of, of, of measurements. Um, Rosa, what about Caviro? Uh, how are your results measures measured? How do you uh, go for one project rather than another one, uh, depending on the results do you on the results that you get. Thank you for this question. Uh, in our cases, uh, we don't have any more waste, but only biomass in our process. So. Uh, mm, clear measure is uh, to add value with uh, a lower uh, environmental impact in uh, our uh, chain. This is uh, uh, the focus of uh, our new project for the future for the uh, production, because uh, uh, we are going to improve each year a new model to obtain uh, the maximum value from all the part of our process. In particular, in, um, in, in that moment, we are going to start a CO2 recovery plant. And this is a big project because uh, um, close a system and improve a new step in, in our procedure. So this is only an example because uh, in all part of our process, uh, we are going to promote uh, um, uh, uh, um, sustainable uh, system with uh, LCA measure and uh, with uh, um, the value uh, measure. 
So this is uh, the system uh, in um, that can 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 increase our value in the future and the, the priority of, of our project and also the importance to uh, complete the, the circular system. Thank you. Uh, Katerina, what about you in, in the context of your startup? Uh, how did you manage to measure the value created out of your byproducts and, and to show their huge potential? Yes, thank you, Florence, because it's uh, as we are talking about circular economy approach, so econom economy part is always behind, but how we transform economy part in something measurable, right? Before, to prove it, to understand how we can compare uh, without an LCA, but how we can do it in the specific case of FiberGlobe, we try to understand how uh, the greenhouse gas emission greenhouse gas emissions can be uh, measured uh, in the raw material production side in the byproduct side where instead of burning that is normal it's a normal approach of a pulp wood industry byproduct instead of burning how um, it impacts on greenhouse gas emission equivalent and the transformation process how we can uh safe this uh how, how like a balance how we can save when we apply to a different product for example has a substrate for horticulture industry and in this industry there is also a target when they are using peat soil has a fundamental resource for uh, greenhouse growers uh, to use them to grow plants how this uh, peat soil can be saved or I, I mean can be an alternative to it it's also if we are not exploring extract extracting this pit lens pit box so the balance and this uh, greenhouse gas measure can be seen as a in the end an economic value so it's a, it's a, a linear approach doing the circularity economy approach within the byproduct um, valorization yes Thank you. Now, Tatiana, um, does the Commission have an, an approach about impact assessment? Is, is impact assessment considered in the, in the Commission's uh, thinking? Thank you, Florence. Indeed, uh, impact assessment, I agree with uh, all of other speakers, is a, is a challenge, especially when uh, you cannot measure a problem because you don't have a definition. And this was the case uh, for the Commission until 2018, uh, when finally a definition of food waste was uh, uh, created, it was an, there was an agreement on. Um, so the work on the impact is ongoing, uh, but I can say that, for example, in relation to the two initiatives that I mentioned before, so the, um, the obligation for member states to report uh, food waste level and the revision of date marking rules, there will be an impact assessment uh, in, um, in 2022 for the measurement and in 2023 for the guidelines. So uh, every, initiative, every initiative, for every initiative that the Commission does, there is always an impact assessment to see whether we're going on the good direction. And this is for the uh, policy, generally, generally speaking, for the policy. When I talk about the research and innovation agenda is set, uh, not instead. Uh, still, the focus on impact is um, is very big. For example, in Horizon Europe, we are putting a great attention on the expected impact. The way we are designing the work program and the call for proposal uh, is reflecting uh, exactly the, the expected impact. For example, uh, we are not talking about thematic areas or chapters or uh, intervention areas, but we are talking about destinations in the work program. It means that we are really structuring it uh, to reflect the objectives uh, that we want to achieve. Um, and we are asking proposals and applicants to measure and to, to show us how they will deliver impact. Thank you. Thank you. I was looking at the questions coming in from our uh, from our audience, and there's already quite a few. So I think we can start moving to those uh, right now. 
And one of the first ones we received was from uh, Adrian Weil, a resource efficiency senior manager at Plastics Europe. Adrian says that with the move to remove packaging from food, it will inevitably lead to more food waste and GHG emissions. Now, that's a statement uh, which uh, is his, uh, but uh, he says, that happens at the time of growing population, loss of fertile soil through intensive farming, and climate change impact. How do we address this challenge? So basically, how do we address the challenge of, on the one hand, removing packaging leading to food waste and GHG emissions? I personally think there's a bit of a stretch between the two. Uh, and so the challenge of, you know, uh, coping with that on the one hand and the challenge of having to feed more people uh, with uh, the impact of climate change as well. Who would like to take this one? Who who feels? Uh, Paola, maybe you think you, some of your projects can answer that question? Unmute yourself, sorry. Paola? We cannot hear you. Is it yeah. is it okay? It doesn't work very well. I'm really sorry. Um, what I wanted to say, and maybe this is just my perspective, but I think that before uh, removes or removing packaging is a very strong. Um, uh, yeah, it, it's something really, really, really extreme. Uh, there are several steps that we can do before. We can reduce packaging. We can, I don't know, reduce the, the, the thickness of packaging. But there are several other uh, steps and technologies that we can do before that. So um, I think this statement, and, uh, and uh, it's, a bit, it's a bit an extreme statement. I also would like to hear the, for example, Gert, in, in your industry. So for me, um, we have, for example, um, group and, and one just recently happened a, a workshop exactly on this so um, we are really tackling this uh, through different angles which is not simply the removal of packaging from food uh, I really would say if uh, Adrian if you want to you know come in contact with us you're really very welcome because um, there is really a need to discuss this and to, to be open to, to new technologies and new ways to approach this. Good. So that's an invitation, Adrian. I hope you'll follow up on that. Here, uh, Paola, was yeah. you probably have an answer on this. Well, not, not an answer, but a, a suggestion, yes. So echoing very much what Paolo is saying there, it's like, look, there's, there's a first criterion which we should never forget, which is about all about food safety, right? So whatever we do, if we, uh, and I think that's also the message we're getting uh, from, from, for instance, within specialty food ingredients that we get from the commission, which is saying that we are not going to jeopardize food security, food safety of us. So it's it's not probably as black and white as, as you're suggesting it there, sir. And second thing I would say is that uh, building on what Paula said, there are different routes to Rome. There are different ways that we can think about and building in different also different setups of value chains of parts of value chains on how we can recirculate and make sure we use it wisely and then thirdly yes let's absolutely not forget that if we can come up with innovation with if we use the frameworks to calculate impact as, as tatiana was just referring to that probably is a good basis for coming to an objective discussion on what are most logical routes but personally, we don't believe that also in this aspect, there will only be one solution. We will have to work with different solutions at different scales at the moment of retail, at the moment of home consumption will be different than at the moment of the farmer. Thank you. Now, the next question, and that's probably going to be for you, Katerina, to, to, to uh, share your experience. Um, it's uh, from Jane Bradbeer, from one of our colleagues from EAT Food who says innovation is also needed to prevent or reduce food loss at the beginning of the supply supply chain so upstream uh, innovative fundamental plant science uh, is needed to understand and improve the production and processing how do you propose to approach this what what would your proposal be in this case because that's somehow linked to your activities 
Yes, thank you. And definitely, I agree that the prevention and uh, the reduction should start in the beginning of the supply chain, in the when it normally starts us also. And the innovation also should tackle in the beginning, not in, only in the final individual consum consumer. And uh, yes, the, the specific uh, topic of fundamental plant science, I'm not an expert on that specific topic, but I'm, I can say that I'm an expert on the fundamental part of the substrate industry, horticultural food production industry. So I, I can say that uh, in parallel, if I can uh, compare also, um, the, the the approach should be start to understand how we can measure the quality because the quality and i believe that also in the plant science the quality matters so we, how we can say that there is a quality measurement quality uh, science behind not only with the r d um work but also in the innovation uh, uh, link and why I'm saying that, because we need the standards also to compare, not only a measurement to, to, to understand the, the weight, the power, but also the, um, the quality measurement and the standards to understand. And also the policies that maybe will come soon will help uh, the R&D part and the innovation um, seems to be um to be uh yeah in a in a in a good level to also to engage the public in the end to speak with them and to understand how we can improve it both we have a couple of questions here related to the definition of food waste which is something also that paula mentioned in in, in her very introduction um what are the challenges to align definitions because we know that there are different definitions and this is probably going to go to you tatiana uh, there are different definitions depending on the on the stakeholders so how can we align them and um uh, and then i'm trying to put in the um the other question about definition no actually i think that's probably uh probably the main aspect of it so, yeah, Tatiana, how do we align the various definitions that exist? Thank you. As I mentioned before, already we, we made big progress because since 2018, we do have a European uh, definition of food waste. Uh, and this definition comes from the food definition uh, from the food law and the waste, so the definition of food from the food law and definition of waste from the waste directive. Uh, because as you can imagine, there, there is, it's, a, it's a huge, um, it's a very uh, how say, sensitive uh, thing. That how do you define waste? What is food? So there could be a Pandora vase. So finally, uh, since 2018, uh, we have an agreement on that. Um, the Commission defined food waste as a, so, so all the waste from farm to fork. For example, uh, this is different from the, um, the FAO, which separate the food loss and food waste. What I can say is that uh, we are working also on the food loss aspect, um, especially in the research and innovation um, uh, framework. Uh, at, and then um, we are collaborating with the FAO and the UNEP, which are actually the, main, uh, the two main actors which are working on the definition, in particular the food waste index uh, is being developed by UNEP and food loss is being developed by FAO. So we are um, aware of the fact that uh, this is a challenging topic and we are collaborating with the uh, different institutions to align uh, uh, on it. I hope uh, I answered the question. Um, would anybody else like to say something about the definition? Uh, which definition do you apply, for instance, uh, here? I'm going to duck the question, Florence, but I do want to say something about it. And what I wanted to say about it is, um, as clearly illustrated here in, in the panel discussion we had with, by, by Rosa and by Katarina, is that not all, all waste is created equal. And so if, if you accept that, because if you look at the, the waste material that Katarina uses to, to, to work in Fiberglob and what they do that, and what Rosa can get out of the raw material that she's using, simply the nature of that quote unquote waste gives you completely different options. And so 
one of our big concerns is that if we come to very strict, very narrow definitions of what is quote unquote the right definition of waste, then there are two big things that we worry about. One is that we will come with something which is the average of the average and therefore it's a mediocre definition which will not help us progressing towards 20 to towards uh, our uh, our green deal objectives or the other part is that it becomes so restrictive that we're going to make dumb decisions right and so i'm my plea here ducking the question uh, hopefully a little bit elegantly is trying to say that don't make it don't don't fix on it i mean it's it's like riding the bicycle right so we know what food waste is when we see it and let's keep it such in uh, an agile, a flexible way of looking at it that we can hold people accountable on saying, please don't spoil, don't waste, but two, enable us, allow us to come up with, with solutions which make sense for all the consumers in Europe, but also for the, for the, for the companies who are working on it. Thank you. This was clearly a, a, a point that made unanimity. I could see all our other speakers nodding on, on this one. And as you said earlier, there's no one size fits all. So at least uh, this, uh, this clarifies it. Uh, I would like now to get back to each of you for a very short maximum one minute concluding sentence so that we can uh, head back to the plenary room on time. And maybe Katerina, you start with your concluding remark. Yes, thank you to start this uh, conclusion because yes, I think we are all here because we have the ambition to change. <laughs> we have the ambition to share these changes and when we change is never easy. So the way that we look, the way that we change our paradigm as individuals and have it in our companies, in our entities, um, and it's important to share, important to also uh, keep with our um, our positive and a good way of thinking and uh, yes i think look for a waste in a sp in this specific cases has uh, has an opportunities is the key message thank you rosa what would your main conclusion be unmute yourself you're on mute sorry we hear you and uh, in this case, I think uh, that uh, in the uh, next uh, few years, uh, the challenge is uh, probably the creating uh, an operating link among uh, the different countries in, uh, in order to make uh, an agenda about uh, circularity, agriculture and farm fork uh, strategy to maximize the cooperation among uh, the actors involved. And uh, uh, in this case, uh, uh, the definition of RITA of uh, Byproduct uh, waste uh, waste loss is uh, an important point uh, to merge all uh, uh, the actor among uh, the the farm to fork uh, identification. And uh, I hope uh, I think uh, the better choice is uh, the large speaking and uh, the cooperation with all uh, the uh, actor in uh, all this part of uh, strategy and. Uh, point of the chain thank you very much bye bye thank you Kirt, a very brief word it, thank you for this really interesting i think we're not there yet but there is probably more momentum and more energy to move than ever before and i really like how we're bringing everybody in the chain together on this thank you tatiana i can say that uh, i could take this thing to call the whole research and innovation community to step up and uh, deliver the impact needed, especially in the view of the UN Food System Summit in 2021. And I could reassure that the Commission stands ready to support. Thank you. Paola, the final word is yours. Can you hear me this time? Ah, okay. So also for me, and I'm connecting especially to Rosa, that in order to obtain the best results to manage waste uh, is really to connect all the players, uh, involve them and work together uh, towards the, the, all the players of the, of the value chain, of course, towards uh, one common, uh, let's say, uh, you know, result. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much to all our speakers. Thank you very much to all of you who followed us online.
uh, I invite you to go back to the main stage, the main room where you have your plenary so that you can hear the conclusions to this morning's session by Dr. Volker Heinz, who's the CEO of the uh, German Institute of Food Technologies. In the meantime, I wish you a nice rest of the day, ni nice uh, conference because it's far from over yet. Have a good afternoon and most of all, stay safe. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.